got a favor to ask of you after I do this. You bet. Ready? Yeah, sure. Uh, Ted, it's great to see you this week in Austin at NI Week. I've got three questions for you. Sure. You ready? Yeah. Um, what brought you to New York City to start the new program at NYU? Well, Jeff, it's great to see you. It was very hard leaving Austin, but uh, NYU was uh, talking about merging or buying Brooklyn Polytechnic. Brooklyn Polytechnic was a great engineering school for over 100 years, and through the 1990s it had had some tough times. And here was an opportunity to be part of a team to get a merger done between a great university, engineering university in Brooklyn, and merge it in one of the best comprehensive universities in the world with NYU. So I went, I took a chance. I also knew if you can make it New York, you can make it anywhere. And uh, they didn't have a wireless research center to speak of. And I had uh, built one at Virginia Tech and had built a program here in Austin. And uh, it just seemed like a great opportunity and a great challenge. And uh, it's been amazing. Tell us about the two or three key areas of the program. Well, first of all, uh, I've seen this millimeter wave interest coming even before the 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi. I've been working in it for over 20 years. And now with 4G being rolled out in the cellular world, the need for bandwidth and capacity is only going to increase exponentially up, you know, 10 years, 20 years into the future. So you have to go up in spectrum. So millimeter wave is going to be a key part of it. And so we're focusing in uh, NYU Wireless, the research center I started in 2012. We're focusing on broadband millimeter wave measurements in and around New York City, Brooklyn, in buildings, around buildings, trying to study and showing the industry that uh, millimeter wave not only will work, but it could work better than today's cellular. So that's one big focus. Uh, massively broadband is the term I like to use. Massively broadband wireless in the millimeter wave spectrum. Other areas of work uh, we do are uh, in the healthcare world where we work with the medical faculty to bring uh, health care to the masses through cell phones and through uh, computer appliances trying to preemptively care for patients and then also in the healthcare world we look at MRI improved imaging and work with the docs and some of the leading experts on imaging and taking digital signal processing into the healthcare field those are some of the main areas uh, we're here this week at NI uh, National Instruments Week uh, what are some of the tie-ins between your program and NI, and how are some of the uh, LabVIEW products that they have really helping advance and help people see the vision for um, this massive broadband need? Yeah, well, NI is a terrific partner. They work very closely with academicians around the world and really believe in having universities that are on the cutting edge not only help improve their products but drive their products. I personally have been very fortunate to work with the leadership at NI since my days at UT Austin and now uh, even in greater uh, force since I've been at NYU. Uh, we're working with them not only on their millimeter wave product development for test and measurement that we incorporate in our uh, broadband channel sounder to make a lot of the measurements we do, but also working with them with LabVIEW and FPGA trying to build baseband signals. We actually are emulating 4, 4G LTE baseband on NI platform and we transmit that in our lab and we're able to look at algorithms and applications and we're going to be taking that work to kind of the future 5G uh, massively broadband millimeter wave type uh, uh, baseband approaches. So we work very tightly with NI in a number of ways as uh, NYU and NYU Wireless Research Center is a lead user. What I've seen at the show here, and NI Week is always a wonderful time. It's a, you know, it's put on by engineers for engineers and they do such a great job. What I've seen uh, to me is very exciting is the major uh, commitment that NI is making to the cellular and the telecom Wi-Fi world. You can see it on the show floor with a number of their partner exhibitors. They really are investing. They're investing not just in test and measurement, but in prototyping. They've made a number of acquisitions over the last several years that bring them into kind of where the future of wireless has to go, both in building the hardware and building the software and applications. Uh, so that's really struck me this week, that they're really making a commitment to wireless uh, not just in test and measurement, but also in the design and the uh, t uh, kind of the creative process to make the wireless products of the future. You mentioned 5G, and yesterday you were on an executive panel with Airbus, Intel, and Dr. T himself from yes. uh, NI. 
What is 5G? And then maybe walk us through the evolution of 5G, including standards um, development. Sure, Jeff. It, it's funny to be talking about 5G now when 4G, LTE, has really just been on the radar for the last few years and is consuming huge amounts of investment and is a very important part of the rollout of wireless in this decade. But as a researcher at a university, my job is to keep pushing the forefront and try to bring new ideas that in seven to ten years could be commercialized. And uh, I've been using the term 5G now for a few years now. It's starting to catch on. Millimeter wave is one of the areas where you're going to have to go to get the huge amounts of capacity that we're going to have to serve to user. Millimeter wave won't be the only thing, but it'll be a big part of the future, especially in urban dense cores where small cells will already happen and where the uh, uh, backhaul, the massively broadband wireless spectrum at millimeter waves could be used for backhaul as well as mobile deployment. So while 5G hasn't started officially as a standard setting body, a lot of the industry, a lot of our industrial affiliates, in fact, at NYU Wireless are starting to converge on what 5G will be. And uh, some of the key things that we'll see is not only the use of millimeter wave spectrum, but as we go higher in spectrum, we'll see uh, these wavelengths get much shorter. And so you'll start to see multiple element antennas, 16, 32 element antennas in every cell phone for actual cellular coverage. So the radio waves now, instead of having omnidirectional coverage, we're going to pinpoint energy to where we want at the base station and off a building. That's going to be an exciting new area and offers a whole bunch of uh, technical problems to build into the standard of the future. We're going to have low latency, so we're going to have smaller TDD, time division based frames, uh, on the order of 50 or 100 microseconds per user, much shorter than today. Uh, so you'll have lower latency at a much higher data rate. We're talking four to six gigabits per second, probably reaching tens of gigabits per second by the mid 2020s. A uh, lot of exciting development. You know, we see the whole Wi Fi world and cellular. Uh, starting to maybe converge a little. So you may see today's Wi-Fi and today's cellular in 10 years be much tightly uh, integrated. And then we have the whole Internet of Things, these very low power devices that will be distributed around our home or around the enterprise. And how do you bring them in to be covered in cellular? Or do you go through Wi-Fi and then bring Wi-Fi into cellular? All these things are unknown right now. But they're all up for grabs and there are special interest groups that are forming. We're part of that conversation at NYU Wireless with a number of the leading companies. And the next 18 months is going to be a very exciting time as we define, set a trajectory for the future of wireless, which will be 5G. Ted, thanks for your time. Pleasure, Jeff. Good to see you.